Hey everybody, and welcome to the webinar today, uh, part of the Flash series put on by Hannibal Marketing. Elena and I will be going over mastering the art of e-commerce reporting with Excel today. So to give you a quick introduction of myself, I'm Jacob Brown. I'm a senior account manager at Hannibal Marketing. I'm also a blogger on PPC Hero, and you can catch me um, on Twitter with the Twitter handle Jake Brown PPC. And I'll let Elena introduce herself. Hey everyone, my name is Elena Thompson. I'm a production associate here at Hannapin Marketing, as well as a blogger for PPC Hero. And you can find me on Twitter at Elena P. Thompson. Cool. So speaking of Twitter, um, if you want to join the conversation with us on Twitter, uh, you can use the hashtag, hashtag ThinkPPC, um, and you can uh, kind of get involved in the conversation with us on Twitter as we go through the webinar or after the webinar today. So first we're going to start with a live poll question. So our question for today is how do you manage your PPC accounts? Um, so do you A, um, you're part of an in-house team, uh, B, you do all the, all the marketing including PPC, um, do you work at an agency or are you in a consultant yourself? So Elena, um, while they're answering that question, how long have you been in paid search and part of the Hannafin team? So I've been a part of the Hanneman team for six months now, almost to the day. It's been great every single day. Shout out for Hanneman. But um, I, so that means really I've only been on an agency side of PPC. But I know you've had more experience with PPC in almost all of these different categories. So what have you done? Yeah, so I worked at Hanneman for two and a half years. Um, and then... Um, I've also worked at agencies that do marketing outside of PPC um, as an intern uh, back in the day, I guess we can call it. And then um, I've also worked uh, in-house in the past as well um, before I worked at Hannapin. So we've got some results here from our um, test. Uh, it looked like around 38%, um, which was the highest mark as part of an in-house team. Um, so looks like that's the biggest part of our audience, which comes to no surprise considering we're going over e-commerce specific accounts. Um, but we can also uh, um, involve the agency type as they go through um, different ways that they can help out all of their e-commerce clients. So our first task here is um, easily calculating projected lag revenue. So a problem that you run into when you're doing e-commerce accounts is and, and making optimizations based off of um, revenue in e-commerce accounts is a lot of times when you're making those optimizations off of the past seven days or past 14 days or so you're really not calculating um, or making your optimizations based off of all of the revenue that is going to come in um, so what I've created here or the Hannafin team here has created is a way to kind of project out what that lag revenue might look like for you in the future um, so First thing you would want to do is go into your account, go to tools, then to conversions, then to attribution, and then go to the time lag segment. And you should see something like this. Um, within that first day, you can see on this particular account, 47% of the revenue came in. So if I wanted to look at day over one day versus the previous month, I'm looking at almost 100% of the revenue versus only 47% of the revenue that's going to come in. So it's not a real fair comparison. So that's why you might want to use something like this. Um, so the first thing you want to do is set up a formula like you see here in Excel. Um, basically, it's showing in the first day we get 47% of our revenue. In the second day, we get 5.09% of our revenue. We want to add that together um, from an attribution standpoint. We want to make sure we're contributing all the revenue that should be accounted for at that point in time. And it goes so on and so forth. As you can see through day 13 through 30, um, we utilize that formula 27.87% divided by 18 when we add it in because the 12 plus days um, on the tool here, um, we, we divide that by the 18 days um, from 12 through 30. So moving on to the next slide that we wanna use when we're setting this up is, now that we know what our history is in terms of lag, um, we wanna be able to make the projection. So here you can see uh, revenue accounted for after the first 30 days, 100%. Um, so since we currently see that on June 20th, in this case, um, this report was would have been ran on July 20th. On June 20th, we can see 
$5,010. That's what we can project to be the ending because 30 days have passed by. Where if you scroll down to July 1st, for example, only 19 days have gone by so far. Um, so far in the account, we can see that there's $4,040 in current revenue. Um, that should equate to around 83% of the total revenue. So but when it's all said and done, we're projecting that we'll have $4,869 in revenue on that day from the clicks that we um, attributed during that day. In order to have the uh, revenue accounted for metric here to match up with your days gone, the formula on the bottom will show you how to do that. So it's really an if statement um, that utilizes that if statement in order to come up with a VLOOKUP. And so the VLOOKUP really just goes about where you look through the lag projections and then um, basically um, from the day, uh, so if one day has gone by, it will use that percentage of 47% as you see on the bottom and so on and so forth. Um, the days gone by is used by a simple um, subtracting the current date by the date um, in that column or row. Um, we do have a lot of articles on all of these initiatives that we're going through on PPC Hero if you want to check those out um, as well. And now I'm going to pass it over to Elena to show you how to do revenue per impression ad testing. Great. So this is another time that we use Excel for e-commerce reporting. Do this all the time when we're doing A-B ad testing and we want to know which ad copy is bringing in the most revenue and is thus the most successful for an e-commerce client. So here we have two examples of what maybe I would use for ad copy if I'm selling Lucky Charms online. So the first ad copy is focusing on buying one box for $4 as and then the B or the test ad is looking at selling five boxes for $16. So obviously we're comparing the offer here to see which one brings in more revenue from our customers. So at first glance this is going to look like a lot of information but it's actually at the top we just have a nice pivot table from the data we've pulled from AdWords. So we went into AdWords and looked at just the two ads that we had running in a specific ad group and we've downloaded all of the clicks, impressions, costs, conversions and then just pivoted using a pivot table. We've created this to show all of the stats for each one of our ad types. So we've got the five sale, box sale and then the one box sale and then we're comparing across the board. So after sum of revenue, you'll see about four different columns. Those are all just formulas that we've added to our pivot table. They aren't going to come from the AdWords data. We've added those just for some extra insight. You don't actually need them for the calculations we're about to go through below. So that brings me to the next section, which is our winner and our significance. And we've chosen, because this is an e-commerce client, we are looking at revenue per impression as our metric for the winner. So the five box sale is actually the winner in this case because the revenue per impression is 0.0097 as compared to 0.0080 and we're looking for the most revenue per impression because it's an e-commerce client. Now this, we wanted to highlight this because we found that a lot of e-commerce clients might look at conversions per impression or they might look at click rate and when you're really trying to bring in the most possible revenue as an e-commerce client, revenue per impression actually makes more sense in this case. So that's what we've done here. And then you'll see that we have some standard error and some z-score and p-value statistics. Those are just Excel metric, Excel functions, excuse me, that we're using. And we could go into a whole college stats class on how to use z-scores and p-values. And I would rather not bore you with that, so I'm just going to assure you that those metrics are basically telling us that this winner is in fact statistically significant, meaning we have enough traffic on the site to tell us that these are, you know, not just based on one click, that the five box sale is a clear winner based on traffic. And so if you want the more detailed stats formulas that we've used, those are in that second red box towards the bottom of the slide. We brought in square roots and normal distribution and other stats uh, functions like that. But if you just copy these formulas exactly, then you'll be you'll be fine, and you don't have to understand all of the stats behind it. 
Yeah, and obviously we use a pretty dramatic example here, um, but really the, the point behind this test was to show how you would emphasize click-through rate, conversion rate, and average order value all into one metric of revenue per impression. Um, and the reason we use such a dramatic answer is that average order value is usually the one that's used the least. Um, in this example, the five box sale has a much higher average order value, so it can take a lower conversion rate and a little bit lower click-through rate and still come through as the more profitable um, example in this test here. And obviously, we're also not selling Lucky Charms online, so this is a mock example. <laughs> um, so the next example, uh, example here that we wanted to go over for e-commerce clients uh, particular is to go over how we would suggest doing bid changes. Um, so one suggestion that I do for a lot of my clients is to utilize a revenue per click formula. And the reasoning for that is if you're going back in time across a lot of data where the CPCs were dramatically different and the costs um, were rising in certain time spans and costs were down in certain time spans, um, something that would stay constant a little bit more often of the keywords is the revenue per click. Um, so rather than just looking at, hey, what's ROIS in the past, we want to look at how much revenue we're getting per every click so then we know how much we should be paying for each click. Um, so basically, the, the easy way to speak to it is you go revenue per click divided by your ROAS goal, and that should show what you're willing to pay from a CPC level in order to get to your ROAS based off of past performance. Um, so what you see in the, the second formula here, though, is how to project a revenue per click when there is no revenue to be had on, or sent for on a keyword. Um, so that 25 in that formula there would be an example of an average order value for a client. So you would use your average order value divided by one plus click, and what this is essentially doing is making the assumption that the next click that comes through gets a sale at the next average order value, and then coming up with a suggested bid from there. Now a lot of you might be saying, you're completely wrong, Jake. There's no way that we should be using that sort of formula to come up with a suggested bid, except especially if that keyword hasn't contributed to any revenue yet, why would we project the next click gets a sale? So that's not necessarily what we're doing here. What we're doing here essentially is coming up with a number um, in this first slide um, that we can put into that suggested bid column and then using it more often when there is revenue attributed for and a little bit less often when there's not revenue to be spoken for. That's where these max percentage and min percentage numbers come in. So that minimum percentage at 100%, that would mean really 0%. We're not changing the bid at all. Where the max percentage at 140% there would mean we want to be able to change the bid up to 40%. So we don't want to just stick to the suggested bid and make um, really mass changes across the board. Um, we want to be able to help hold accountable um, where we are currently bidding and then make a percentage change off of that, but also use the suggested bid when we're making these changes. So um, in this example, the reason we would have in the first keyword there, 140%, 100%, some examples that we would be looking at is that keyword brought in a ton of our revenue. So we don't want to drop the bid. We want to raise the bid potentially really high if we're hitting our OAS goal number. So if the suggested bid is telling us to raise the bid really high, we want to raise the bid really high. We'll also be looking at impression share. So the reason we look at that is how many impressions are we missing out on? So if we start to raise our bid up dramatically, um, how many more auctions could we potentially get in? And if we start to drop our bid, um, how many auctions will we be missing out on? And will, will it even be worth it anymore? Because if we're only showing in 10 to 20% of the auctions currently, we might not want to be taking the risk and lowering our bid. The other one is average position, of course, which a lot of people use when they're doing their bidding strategy. So if we're currently sitting in position eight or position seven um, as our average position, do we really want to drop that bid at all? So we might keep that at 100% because um, we don't want to drop below the first page. So that's the things that we look at. And then on the other side, um, that bottom one where we're saying we're willing to go down 75% or up to 110%, um, that would be the inverse. So our impression share might be really high there. It's probably a keyword that has not really contributed to revenue, so the suggested bid really isn't telling us as much. Um, it's just really telling us if the next click contributes to a sale where we'll be at from an ROAS standpoint. Um, so we don't want to raise our bid too much off of that. Um, so that's why that max bid would be low and the min bid would be low as well. 
So I hope this makes sense. Again, this is another one we have an article on PPC Hero for you um, that could potentially walk you through this uh, process as well. So I've been talking about different ways you can reach us um, through a question and answer um, through uh, Twitter, but you can also just uh, insert some questions that you have right now um, on the different scenarios that we've um, put through um, for you guys, for your accounts. So um, I'm reading off some questions now. So the first one is, is there a scenario where e-commerce accounts would use a click rate or conversion rate rather than revenue per impression for ad testing? Um, so I'm really glad this question was asked um, because uh, the answer to that is, of course, yes. Um, the reason you would use revenue per impression is if the end goal is to gain more revenue per every impression. If your goal is to get more brand awareness and more people to your site, you want to be using the click rate. If your goal is to get more new customers or more email addresses, then you're going to want to use conversion rates. So it all depends on what your goal is. Uh, but we do know that a lot of the times the goal comes down to basically how much revenue is, is AdWords generating and using that revenue per impression formula is the best way to go about that. So the next question is for revenue per impression, it just seems so much simpler to use um, revenue times margin minus cost. So, so the argument here would be that impressions don't really mean anything because they are not paying for it. So the reasoning we use revenue per impression rather than uh, um, more of a ROAS metric here is because the ad, the ad itself isn't really the contributor to why the cost would be high for a click. So even if you're getting a poor ROAS, what you want to adjust is your bids on your keywords um, rather than adjusting your ad copy. So the ad copy's goal is to get good click rates, good conversion rates, and bring in a good average order value. Well, the keyword's goal and your bidding methods will be more associated with how much you're paying for those clicks. So I agree that we mostly want to be looking at clicks, but when you're testing ad copy, you do always want to pick that click-through rate into consideration. Um, and if your costs are too high, that, that's more of a bidding, um, a bidding issue that, that we need to get figured out. It, look, it looks like that's all we have for questions for today, so I think that's it. Um, we'll send a recording and slides, um, and the PPC ar articles are, um, will all be mentioned via email as well. So um, you'll get all that information uh, sent your way, and I hope you enjoyed our webinar today. Um, also, if you have any more questions that we didn't hit or you didn't type in, um, we can, you can also contact us directly. So any webinar feedback, not only Twitter, um, reaching out to Elaine or I via Twitter, you can also email uh, Hannapin directly at marketing at hannapinmarketing.com. So again, thanks for attending, and um, always use that hashtag, think PPC.